Well, we're about to learn just how good Colorado can be in the Big 12 this year. You are Locked On College Football, your daily podcast on all things college football. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked On College Football. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view every day. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day and your daily source to stay up to date with the biggest stories in the greatest sport on planet Earth, which is why, if you have not already, you should like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review. Please and thank you wherever you listen to or watch this show. We've always got you covered, whether it's realignment, coaching, carousel, the portal, all that and more. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Monopoly Go. I have a competitive side like many of you, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly, so join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free, on the App Store or Google Play. My guy Kevin Borba of Lockdown Bus joining me here on today's show. And Colorado, one of a handful of spring games, Oregon spring game also happening amongst others across the college football landscape on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, the biggest thing that I'm looking for in this game, Kevin, is how Colorado looks in the trenches on both sides of the ball because as we've talked about that's really going to define their success they are set at quarterback now they're not set at running back we'll we'll touch on that in a moment but well they're you know kind of set at running back but they've got the receivers they've they've got some defensive backs they've got the quarterback figured out they got to figure out what's going to happen at the line of scrimmage this year right yeah, the offense line and the defense line, for that matter, were both kind of thrown around like rag dolls all day, every day last season. Uh, even in their win against TCU, it was obvious that the trenches were a problem. Um, and so they brought in a whole new offense line. They brought in a whole new defense line. Realistically, I would say between the two lines, there might be like one person that started last year that will start again this year. Um, and that's actually the center named um, Hank Zelinkis, uh, the coach. coach great name. Said, yeah, great name. Great name. Uh, Coach Shermer said if, the, if they had a game tomorrow, which they do, like a real game, he'd be the starter. So realistically, look how just look out for how good they are in the trenches. Um, if the defense is getting pressure, one, that's a bonus for them because they weren't generating a lot of pressure last season. But two, their whole don't touch Shador or don't touch two hashtag thing would be a little worrisome because obviously the portal closes in, I would say, f- about a week, if I'm not mistaken, um, a few days from now. And so- April, April 30th is the last day where players can enter the portal. Right. And so the portal, I, if it, if the offensive line looks bad, I'd be a little worried, um, to be honest. But I, that's where I'd be watching out is Ishidor getting pressured and is the defense line kind of making life difficult and stopping the run if they do run the ball. <laughs> and, and it's a tough back and forth. Every spring game has has this difficult you know aspect to examine. If you see success in one area is it because that guy's good or because the other guy who's also on the same team is not any good and i I think you have to watch this stuff to to play out is is this game just being televised on on pac-12 network yeah unfortunately for them Um, a a hilarious irony i mean going up against the nfl draft is a bold strategy if you want your spring game to be televised well i mean it's on (laughs) i mean it's on saturday it's not like it's you know going up thursday night on uh against the first round of the nfl draft like it's not i I, I don't i don't think it's this bad but i mean you, you still make a good point it it certainly you know, isn't going to be as hyped as it was a year ago when it was Dion's first game to to really put in front of the fans. But I think it's a really important one because the the shortcomings were were very real last year for Colorado. And Deion Sanders talked about how you know they they've got to get better. You got to paint the picture better, and I'm going to paint it beautifully and all that sort of stuff. Like this is your first chance to to show your fans and all those people who've been so excited and, and and all the people that I know Dion has in mind who are not big fans of his. It's your first chance to show them, hey, th- this is working. We we can do this because at some level, Colorado is a test case as to whether or not you can just build a team through the portal because they're, they're just throwing high school recruiting for the most part to the wind outside of like Jordan Seton. Yeah, it's really kind of a whole test of philosophy. And I would... A sure, or I would urge fans, excuse me, to not read too much into the spring game because, like you said, realistically, we're not going to learn a whole whole lot about this Colorado team. They don't have a running back, so that we know they're going to be throwing it pretty much every down. So that already gives the defense some, some kind of advantage because they don't have to really look out for the run. 
Um, we already know that not everyone's there yet. Uh, they're going to add some defense alignment. They're going to add some new receivers in the fall camp. And so it's just one of those things where you want to see improvement on the across the offense line, obviously, but you also don't want to be like, well, the black team lost in the spring game. So this, this coach prime team is doomed. Like we're not going to come away with any takes like that, but we are going to come away with is the offense line better? Um, how's the offense looking in general with Shador? Is he more fluid and more confident in his passes? Because obviously he said he didn't really like the play calling last year. Does he like the play calling this year? Uh, do certain wi wide receivers step up? Because obviously that's going to be a heated battle. Um, there's only three or four guys, except when you only have one running back. There's usually three to four wide receivers on the field at all times, and they have about eight to nine guys that are going to push for or could be starters. So that's something to look out for. But, yeah, don't read too much into it, but also – just pay attention to certain things. <laughs> yeah, and you know the curious thing is they've had three running backs now transfer out mm -hmm. of of the portal. One of whom we'll we'll dive into uh, in more detail. That being Alton McCaskill later on, on the show when when we talk about the latest names to enter the transfer portal. But how big of a burden does that place on Ohio State running back transfer Dallin Hayden? Yeah, so I would if you would have asked me this like ten minutes ago, I would have said huge. But they just, like, I just got a notification like two minutes ago. They flipped Rashad Amos from Mississippi State. Mm. Uh, he was the Miami of Ohio running back, had like 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, I believe, okay. this past season. So you got Hayden and him coming in, which really takes a lot of the burden off of Charlie Offerdahl and freshman Michael Welch. Um, I think they still need to go get another one. Realistically, running back is a position where they get beat up all the time and you never know what could happen. And I think it never hurts to have too many, but they are bringing in new guys. It's just weird to see they lost three quality guys all within the span of a few days. <laughs> That's just the way that the transfer portal goes uh, sometimes, I guess. But I, I can't remember or I can't think of the last time that, you know, a, a program at this level has had three guys from the same position group transfer when you don't have the you know the sort of depth like it's one thing for three offensive linemen to transfer out or for a couple of backup tight ends but you, you just went down the list like boom boom but but the the addition at running back there uh, is certainly a notable one do you, do you think that, that that's a starter or do you think Dallin Hayden is the starter and the new guy's the backup I would probably roll with Dallin Hayden first um to be honest I think Rashad Amos is an interesting case he spent two years in South Carolina and I think he had like 20 carries combined and then he goes to Miami of Ohio and balls out. And so it's like he got he did well against um, lesser competition. So how does he do back at the Power 5 level? Did that really help him or was it just like the competition? Dallin Hayden was in a really loaded backfield at Ohio State, was somewhat of a contributor um, his freshman year. And then this past season, it was obviously um, he only played in a few games. But I think he kind of has the advantage right now. He has experience. He's played at the highest level. He's been productive at the highest level. Um, but Coach Prime is very – very fond of rotating backs so it's not going to be like okay you're you're going to get 30 carries per game and you're going to get five i would say it's probably going to be like a 2015 situation muy interesante as yeah. they say <laughs> um that's something my brother told me to write on my uh, spanish three test when i told him there was a word requirement he said just put es muy interesante at the end of every sentence you'll be there uh, but before you know it, but certainly Colorado's game, S. Moy and Terrasante, Kevin Barba, Locked on Buffs. Thanks for joining the show, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Michigan State is having, yeah, they're having some notable transfer portal departures. How big of a problem is it? We'll talk about that next. Before we get to the Spartans, let's get to eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has got everything, everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Big names have left East Lansing along the defensive line, but a big name joining us here on the show, that's Matt Sheehan of Locked On Sportins. Look at the hat. Look at the setup. Just top that's tier. That's right. Top tier stuff. That's that's the way we roll here at Locked On. So 
Uh, let's start with Derek Harmon, Matt. He's the latest big name portal entrant, Simon Barrow Jr. We can get to him a- as well. Yeah. It looks like things are thinning along that Michigan State defensive front. Not fun, Spencer. Uh, those were two hits because we're going into the season thinking, okay, we got our strength on the defense. It's that defensive line, maybe even on the whole team. We could have that debate later on, but all of a sudden, overnight, in the span of a few days, uh-oh, uh, both those guys are in the portal. And that is a massive blow because, obviously, those are two starters for Michigan State. Two guys that were Big Ten honorable mention last year. But what's the real kick in the you-know-what, Spencer, is that both those guys were swimming in the portal this offseason. And Michigan State fought to keep them home. They made Derek Harmon one of the highest paid, if not the highest paid defensive tackle, it depends who you're talking to, in the whole conference. So, okay. That's great. Took care of our boys here. Only for them to stick around for January, February, March, and most of April. And um, if you look at the college football calendar, not the most ideal four months to keep a guy around. You'd like them in the fall, but nevertheless, they're out, Spencer. So that's not fun. That's not no, fun. no, it's it, it's certainly not what Michigan State fans want to hear. And, you know, the story you just laid out sounds a little bit like Caden Proctor. Yeah, no, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll hang around, you know, until yeah, the portal yeah. opens, but I'm not going to tell you that. Of course, I, I don't know all the details there. I'm just saying when, when you lay that out in that fashion, that that's the first thing I thought of. I can fill you in. I did like a big 10 minute rant on this on Locked on Spartans. If you want the longer emotionally charged uh, version of this, but I'm a big benefit of the doubt guy. That might be just my biggest fault as a person. So let's say, for example, they signed on to Michigan State and their intentions were to play this season because this is the hot gossip that we are getting in East Lansing and even nationally, too, because Bud Elliott talked about this on his Cover 3 podcast, that there are teams desperate for defensive tackles. That is the highest position of need right now in the spring cycle. So Michigan State throws a bunch of money at Barrow and Harmon. They're probably content just to be at Michigan State, but these other heavy hitter schools are paying upwards of 50% raises on top of what Michigan State has given them. I'm sorry. Like, we're not talking small potatoes here. We're not talking about, like, a $15,000 raise or anything like that. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars on top of what MSU is paying them. Being offered by other schools is the hot rumor. Of course, they're going to pick up the phone. Of course, they're going to say, well, well, I'd be an idiot not to take this because we're talking, like, borderline middle-tier draft pick NFL money right now. Like, it, it is bananas what other schools are offering to pay. Michigan State, on their end, they're looking at this being like, well, yeah, we like these players, but at the same time, only all Big Ten honorable mention is what you've topped out at. We're not going to pay you like you're an Aaron Donald, for example, right now. So go, because we can find someone that is not as good as you, but softens the blow for less of the money than we're already paying you. So it, it's a thing where I can't really blame Michigan State. They're topped out of money. I certainly can't blame these players because I, this is crazy money that's being thrown their way if the reports and rumors are correct. So is to throw your hands up in the air and just say, chalk it up to the game. Like, it's nasty out there. Michigan State, not to say that they're a poor NIL school because, believe me, they took of Aiden Giles. They've taken care of other positions on their team. But eventually, you can't hang with those Tier 1 teams that are ready to spend stupid money on players that are just good, not great. So I I, I, I said I wasn't going to rant before this, but... <laughs> There, there, I was right there, just burning up clock. I'm sorry. Spencer. We're, well, we're not, we're not, we're not bringing you on for for uh, a, a <laughs> lack of emotion yeah. here. I mean, that, that's right. of course the entire point. You got to tell it like it is. So, is the reality yeah. for Michigan State now that this went from being a strength to it's an outright weakness? Like, how, how does this change their outlook for 2024? Yeah, I don't know if it's a bona fide weakness, but it is definitely not a strength anymore. Like, we got Daquan Dowse out of the portal from Georgia Tech. He's fine. Like, that helps cut what that steep decline of talent would have been right there. We have someone on from Stephen F. Austin on campus right now, Brandon Lane. Good a player. Lot of other, good player. A lot of yeah, power I've, teams yeah, I've are covered, looking at I've him. covered him before at the FCS level doing play-by-play. That guy's it, a good football it's player. It's not often a Stephen F. Austin guy is getting some NFL draft chatter, and granted, like a day three pick, but still – that's kind of what we're replacing day three picks to begin with. So if you can get his commitment, that softens the blow and it moves it up to like kind of strength. But yes, as things stand right now, if the season kicked off tomorrow on April 26th, it's just a middling factor here because of course you also got to worry about depth too. And Michigan state, I think have three, maybe four defensive tackles. One guy's like a tweener of defensive end that are scholarship players. We go to walk-ons right after them. So depth is also 
what we got to talk about right now too. So that's, that's the other issue with those two guys leaving. Yeah. And, and I mean, th- there are some high profile names in the transfer portal along with defensive line, Dominic Williams from TCU, perhaps yeah. most notably, there was an entrant from Georgia and then he pulled his name out of the transfer portal. That would have been a guy Michigan state could have gone after, but of course, can't yeah. you have uh Kieran Crawford and Philip bleedy going over to Auburn along the defensive line. Chris Hardy is a guy from uh, Jacksonville State who put up crazy numbers in Conference USA last year. Someone is going to pick him up. Someone's going to pick up all of these guys. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and who uh, gets gets the opportunity to play him next year. But what yeah. one guy who you can confidently say will don that Spartan green in 2024 is Aiden Childs. And I think that he has got all the talent in the world. And I don't know if Michigan State is got high hopes for 2024 and Jonathan yeah. Smith's first year the win total on FanDuel is sitting I believe at four and a half right now oh is it it was at five and a half was it maybe it's five and a half I could be remembering Ooh. wrong you know what we're gonna we're gonna pull it up for the sake of accuracy just okay. just sure. to double check but not certainly high. it it is not, not expected high. to be it is five and a half uh it is okay. it is five and a half so could could be worse yeah four and a half that'd be that'd be pretty brutal but you know Aiden Childs had his first chance to showcase what he can do to the Spartan fan base in the spring game. How do you think he looked? I think he looked fine. I, look, I just want to give context on the spring game. I think he only threw the ball 14 times. It was a windy day and he's slancing. But then again, like what weather do you think he's going to have in Big Ten play once November rolls around? It's not going to be comfortable conditions. But 7-14, had a touchdown. Look, he had some good moments, of course. He used his legs at times. And then he had some moments where he tried to fit the ball in tight windows, overthrew it. But never threw the ball in danger. Like he never overthrew it to a safety that was lurking behind. So it was fine, but look like fine for a spring game for Aiden Childs is okay with me. All right. Like I, I'm not going to grade his whole production on just 14 throws in the spring game because what I take out of it is that dang it, his floor is already way higher than what we had last year. No disrespect to the three or four quarterbacks that tried their best last year, but um, it's already there now. The benefit with Aiden Childs is that his ceiling is also high. Can we start seeing that by the end of his sophomore season? I would be thrilled to see that. But hey, as we gear up into even 2025, that's what the eyes are going to be on, is how high can his ceiling go? So with all that said, with the defensive lineman being lost, with Aiden Childs providing promise, five and a half is the over-under. I got to say, Spencer, I'm still at the over right now because of that schedule. It sets up nicely in September. Don't look at October. <laughs> I was like, going to say that, big, October, uh, that, that October stretch in the middle. There, there. Um, just there, big red X through that one. There yeah, might just... be there might be some body blows delivered to to the fan base in East Lansing. But hey, yeah. I've I've seen Jonathan Smith out coach teams that yeah. have got more talent than what he than what he's working with before. So far, be it from yeah. me to overlook what he is capable of doing. I, I think he right. succeeds in the long term. But certainly losing the two defensive tackles that that is. That, that's a blow. It, 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 it's it absolutely a blow. But Childs being there, hey, maybe maybe a quarterback is the only thing that matters at the end of the day. And Childs has, Childs has just got immense, immense talent. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility if he really develops this year. He could be a top five quarterback in the Big Ten. I know. I know. And, like, we're talking, hey, maybe he could play himself up to the first round in the 2000, what would that be, 26 draft when he's eligible? So, sorry, I'm just doing the math right here, carry the one. But whenever, <laughs> look, the, the ceiling is sky high for him. Uh, the hype is absolutely going through the roof over here in East Lansing because we are starved for good quarterback play and also just fun quarterback play. I know that's a very, like, low bar to shoot for, but – just That's where they're at. Quarter- hey, dual threat quarterback. We haven't had one of those in a long time in East Lansing, and we are a fan base that just saw our offense last year put up 19.6 points per game. So, yes, e. excuse e. us for being e. a little excited about a new <laughs> offensive look here. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of uh, good storylines here in East Lansing, man. Yeah, no, the, prospect no of, the, 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 the prospect of scoring more than 19 points a game is indeed one that Michigan State fans should – Hope to strive for at, at at the very least for this Shooting year. Shooting high, yeah. <laughs> really high. Yeah. yeah, we always strive to bring on Matt Sheehan when we need to know anything about the Spartans. Check him out, Locked On yeah. Spartans on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Matt, thanks as always. Oh, uh, no, thank you, and everyone that uh, has a team that is somewhat involved in the portal, stay safe out there. It's, it's nasty. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's because, nasty. <laughs> uh, the transfer portal continues to get impact players, starting caliber guys coming to a team near you. So I've been told that I am a competitive person. 
I bet you Matt would be told the same. If you think that's true for you, then guess what? Monopoly Go is for you. Your competitive side will love Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, which is pretty good. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part, is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent on iconic properties just like classic Monopoly, but now you can heist their vaults of riches for yourself. And the leaderboards show you who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. If you're not into the competitive side, you can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. The never-ending cycle of the transfer portal. Well, it will end eventually. You know, it'll close on April 30th, and then we'll see how many players exit the portal after April 30th. But they can enter for still four more days as uh, this show gets released. And uh, the latest is former five-star LSU running back John Emery Jr. John Emery Jr., the sixth-year running back out of LSU, has entered the transfer portal. I'm Caroline Fenton, host of Locked on LSU. And what makes John Emery Jr. so special is not just his initial burst in quickness as a runner off of the line of scrimmage, it's also his his abilities as a pass catching running back in 2022 he caught for 129 yards his best season as a receiver on just 13 receptions good for about 10 yards per catch even this past season in 2023 he had a 49 yard reception he's at his best in early downs maybe in first and 10 or second and six kind of situations but the one thing with John Emery Jr. is that he is coming off of an ACL tear he tore his ACL in November of this past season so John Emery Jr. may not be available medically at the beginning of the season but any team that lands him will be getting a player with 28 games of starting experience. That's a lot of experience for a guy in the portal for a former five-star recruit. Now, the injury component makes this intriguing because would he go into the transfer portal and seek a new home if he didn't feel he was going to be ready to play? Because if you couldn't go somewhere or you didn't feel confident you were going to be able to land somewhere and you know get a scholarship opportunity to, to play football, then you probably wouldn't be leaving LSU. So you might hear, you know, Caroline talk in that clip about the injury and think, well, I don't know, that's a little bit risky there, perhaps. But I really, unless he is thinking about just not playing football or maybe go somewhere where they understand, look, we're not going to have you till uh, October or the middle of of September. Now, ACL tears can be six-month injuries for some guys. They can be 12-month injuries for some guys. They could be 14-month injury. It depends on who you are. If you got hurt in November, and let's say nine is kind of standard, you'd be ready around August time. So it'd certainly be a late install into the offense. But a guy like John Emery Jr. is exactly the sort of player that a lot of schools are looking for in the backfield. Talent and production, both proven at the highest level. So John Emery Jr., I'd certainly expect him to land in a really solid spot. Here's something that's going to surprise you, especially for my everydayers out there. Wait for it. Wait for it. There's a Colorado player in the transfer portal. The Buffs making moves in the portal? I can't believe it. I actually can believe this one more than Dylan Edwards, who I talked about on yesterday's show. Colorado running back Alton McCaskill has decided to enter his name into the college football transfer portal. I'm Kevin Borba, host of Locked on Buffs, and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Mr. McCaskill. The Conroe, Texas native was a three-star recruit that ranked as the 406th player in the country, number 27 running back, and the number 57 player in the state of Texas. He chose Houston over offers, a plethora of offers. He had over 32 offers. He had schools like Alabama, Auburn, Florida State, Kansas State, SMU coming after him, but he chose to go to Houston, and it paid off for him in a big way. In 2021, he had 189 carries for 961 yards and 16 touchdowns and earned American Freshman of the Year. He then missed the next season due to injury, transferred to Colorado, where he only had 14 carries for 59 yards, missed pretty much all the season due to injury. Coach Prime said he wasn't ready, so we never got really got to see him get going. In Colorado, he was expected to have a major role this upcoming season this upcoming season for the Buffs, they just, but decided it was time to move on. If your team lands him, you're getting one of the most prolific running backs in the country when healthy. If he's healthy, he could be a game changer. And that is something that every team can use. Again, 
questions about injuries at the running back position, that can be a theme. Running back and linebacker are usually two of the most banged up positions because of the collisions that they that they take and that they deliver on a play-to-play basis in, in college football, and that, that applies to the NFL as well. It's why running backs don't get paid very often in the NFL because, well, they don't have a particularly long shelf life. Ezekiel Elliott, of course, comes to mind. But Alton McCaskill is not someone I thought would go into the transfer portal or Dylan Edwards. And, you know, Colorado added Ohio State transfer Dallin Hayden. That move is looking more and more important by the day because they had Anthony Hankerson transfer out. He was a depth piece at running back who was, you know, pretty solid last year. He went to Oregon State. And then Dylan Edwards went into the portal. He was the guy, remember, that caught that fourth and two long touchdown to secure the win against TCU for the Buffs in uh, in, in Fort Worth when they kind of put the world on notice for, hey, Colorado might be better than everybody thinks. And, you know, we know how the rest of the season went. But Dylan Edwards is a guy that's got tremendous, tremendous potential. He's in the portal. And then Alton McCaskill goes into the portal. Suddenly Colorado kind of thin at the running back position. And look... These are guys that can go somewhere and produce right away. I've seen Dylan Edwards play football at the Power 5 level. I've seen Alton McCaskill produce at a high level when healthy throughout the course of the year. All three of those guys, John Emery Jr., Alton McCaskill, Dylan Edwards, maybe Edwards a little less so because he's a tad smaller, but these are all starting caliber running backs. These are all guys that can play not just a role, but a significant role in your offense this year. So if you're a team that's looking for a running back in the transfer portal, there are some real options right now. There, there are some real, real options out there. Also a name to mention, Isaiah Newell from Oregon State. He's been a rotation guy, hasn't really played a ton the last couple of years, but talking about the depth situation, he'd fit in perfectly at Colorado. If he could go be a number two or three running back, that's kind of where he, he's been. He's you know been a bit a bit further down on, on the depth chart so far, but a lot of running backs, don't forget Damian Martinez, has not taken his name out of the transfer portal yet because he's still looking for what his next home will be. Miami's been the front runner for quite a while, but... Running backs galore, running backs galore, starting caliber guys, not just depth pieces, but certainly those players uh, are available as well. A couple other names to be aware of. Did you see what Missouri did? Probably not. That's why I'm telling you here on the show. Missouri's got a big win total, according to our friends at, at FanDuel. It's actually uh, nine and a half. Yeah, that's You did not mishear me. It's a pretty big win total for the Missouri Tigers in the SEC, but guess what? They're bolstering their profile to try and live up to that sort of hype. So they have landed a commitment from another SMU transfer offensive lineman, Marcus Bryant. So Bryant was an all AAC lineman last year. You want to talk about the value of group of five schools and and the ability to elevate kids profiles in college football. This is according to Sports Illustrated. The former Mustang was a low-ranked three-star recruit in the class of 2020, only holding offers from SMU and Incarnate Word, which is an FCS program. He had interest from Arizona State as well, but it does not appear that there was an offer there. He was immediately a hot commodity in the transfer portal, holding offers from TCU, Texas A&M, Mississippi State, Washington, and others. Bryant held a prediction to commit to Washington on 24-7 Sports, which is, a, which is a position group that Locked On Huskies host Roman Tomashoff has spoken on this show about as being a need for the Huskies in the spring portal window. This was the guy they were going after, and Missouri snatched him up. This is a huge, huge get up front for the Missouri Tigers. You've got Brady Cook coming back. You've got Luther Burden coming back. Eli Drinkowitz is feeling great after an 11-win season. Can't ever forget about the trenches, and Missouri is not, especially when you're playing in the SEC. You go get a guy that was coveted by other SEC or Big Ten programs, yeah, there's a reason that Marcus Bryant had offers from those sorts of places. He's going to step in and start right away for Missouri. That's an impact player. He's an offensive lineman. He's not going to put up crazy stats, but that still makes him an impact player. Speaking of uh, the group of five level, Uh, So, Brandon Sullivan is a name most of you probably don't remember. He was a part of one of the more forgettable college football seasons in recent memory, and it took place at Northwestern. Of course, they just underwent maybe the greatest individual turnaround in a single season that that we've seen in college football lately under David Braun. They went from 1-11 to 8-5. Like, that's, where does that happen? Like, Colorado had a good turnaround. They went from one to four wins. They were a much better team. Northwestern, which is a harder place to bring in players than Colorado, especially in the transfer portal, 
went from one and eleven to eight and five. They did a heck of a job. Now the quarterback or a quarterback during that one and eleven season for the Wildcats was Brendan Sullivan. He was the presumed starter for the Wildcats this year, and he's got two years of eligibility remaining, so he's going to hit the transfer portal. Now, is he going to be a highly coveted target? I think most places have got their quarterback situation pretty set. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He debuted as a sophomore in 2022, completed 74% of his passes, not for a ton of yards, but four touchdowns and three interceptions uh, amidst a, a struggled year. He was battling with Ben Bryant for the starting quarterback position a season ago and was ultimately the backup. But this is a guy that, to me, screams group of five. Not because he isn't a talented player. I just talked about the sorts of players that can roll through the group of five ranks. But a guy who is at a power five school that they thought he would be the starter and now doesn't have a starting job locked up, I would watch for a group of five school that can make some noise in whichever conference he lands in to go and pick up a guy like Brendan Sullivan. That's the latest quarterback in the transfer portal. There haven't really been many. Have not been many. Of course, yeah, Jaden Rashada find his way to Georgia, which I think is an outstanding spot for him to land. But Brandon Sullivan, quarterback name, not to be overlooked in the portal. Curious to see where he lands. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.